Some breaking news in a CBS Sports HQ. Just hours after stating their intention of trading running back Le'Veon Bell, the franchise of the New York Jets has released the 28-year-old running back. Earlier in the week, Bell expressed his, expressed his displeasure of his usage in head coach Adam Gase's offense by liking some tweets critical of the Jets' signal caller. But Le'Veon Bell released by the New York Jets in the wee hours of Tuesday night. Alongside CBS Sports NFL insider Jonathan Jones and our guy Bryant McFadden, uh, some news going to jump up and catch you every once in a while, and that's what this one does here. Le'Veon Bell released by the Jets after they, you know, had leaked the idea that maybe this was a trade potential, get some pieces back for Bell, but... Uh, here we are, a couple hours pass, and it's a release. JJ, what do you make of this news? Yeah, not a surprise this was an eventuality. When it gets to the point where, okay, we're going to leak the news that we're going to uh, look for a trade partner with Le'Veon Bell, they've been looking for some time, even dating back to last year. The Adam Gase and Le'Veon Bell partnership was never going to work. Uh, it was a mistake from the beginning. Uh, these two personalities, everything that we know about them, it was never going to work. And so then you look out there on the field. Was Le'Veon Bell the same guy from the middle 2010s? No, he wasn't, but he was still almost 1,300 yards from scrimmage last season. And yeah, he was banged up a little bit this year, but uh, there's not a lot working around for, for him to work with with the New York Jets, but really this was a this was about fit. And you get into starting to like things on Twitter that are a little disparaging and you know what you're doing. And listen, I, I'm not even denigrating really uh, Le'Veon Bell for it, but uh, by Thursday, the Jets owed him a $2.5 million bonus. They did not want to pay that to a guy that they didn't want to, to be there. He didn't want to be there. And so after uh, just more than 16 games, I think he was at 17 or 18 games for the New York Jets, he winds up getting paid about $28 million. So again, this match probably should have never happened for either side, especially with Adam Gase as head coach of the New York Jets. And now moving forward, he's still on this side of 30. So that's a great thing for Le'Veon Bell and he can join a winner now. Uh, you said it in as many words there, J.J. It's been injuries. It's been disagreements. It's been holdouts in the past career of Le'Veon Bell as he looks forward to the rest of his career here, only 28 years old. And uh, we talk about him as one of the uh, fallen stars here in the NFL. BMAC, when you received this news, uh, your initial reaction to this release is what? Obviously, you want to get something back for a talent like Le'Veon Bell. But what does that say uh, about the decision by the Jets? I'm not surprised. I uh, remember what a few months ago they traded with their best defensive player in Jamal Adams. And we, granted, he is injured right now, but that trade has worked out pretty well for Seattle with them being undefeated uh, and, and the impact he's made on the football field, especially his ability to attack and provide a big time disruptive light play. So I'm not surprised. Clearly, the Jets, they're in a rebuild mode. I think the bigger question is who will actually orchestrate this rebuild because I don't, uh, I, don't envision, I don't envision seeing Adam Gates, the head coach, in 2021 unless there's a huge dramatic turnaround. But based on what we've seen so far, uh, they will potentially have a new man in charge to try to get this rebuild going in the right direction. And I think Le'Veon Bell is happy. Uh, Jonathan talked about maybe being able to... Uh, uh, sign on with a potential playoff caliber team. Clearly, any team is almost better than what he was just a part of and in, 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 with the New York Jets and being able to go into a situation that they can get the most out of him as a player. That's something that we did not see. I mean, Le'Veon Bell does not look like the Le'Veon Bell that we saw in the Pittsburgh Steelers uniform. A lot has changed and it's not just about him not being a good running back still having the talent to be able to go out and dominate you look at the structure that was surrounding him or the lack thereof that was a big reason for the lack of production coming from Le'Veon Bell. Uh, BMAC, you state that he might be happy. I think we got the receipts to back that up. I'm uh, going to take a look here at Le'Veon Bell's Twitter feed as it currently stands. There's a pinned tweet from March 13th, 2019. NYC, <laughs> let's do it. And then four minutes ago, now uh, more like 11 minutes, Le'Veon Bell tweeting simply prayer hands or high fives. Either way, it's happy to be out of the New York Jets facility. Uh, but decisions do have to be made both in New York and elsewhere with the future of Le'Veon Bell as you look forward uh, to teams who are maybe a little bit strapped for cash but still need a running back in the short term. Uh, who comes to mind? You know exactly who comes to who mind, is it? Joe. <laughs> you know it's the Chicago Bears. It's the Chicago Bears who obviously uh, are, are missing Tariq Cohen for the rest of the season. It's the Chicago Bears who, you know, listen, I don't think that they have the quarterback 
uh, with, with Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky or put them together and go out with a Frankenstein's monster of Fabisky. It, it's not going to happen. However, they still need a running back, and could they do something with a, a rushing and receiving threat like Lev Bell? Absolutely. That's what jumps to mind. Uh, you got a Chicago Bears team uh, very much in the hunt for an NFC playoff uh, spot. I don't think they're going to win the North. However, I do very much believe that they can get a 5, 6, or 7 seed. And when you have that, you want somebody who's been there. Obviously, Bell with his time uh, in Pittsburgh. But the one concerning thing I do have with Le'Veon Bell, again, the, the burst has really just not been there. He hasn't had a rush of 20-plus yards since 2017, we know that he obviously sat out the 2018 season. So that means that he didn't have one throughout the entire 2019 year and through this season. So it's been a while. Again, he's on the good side of 34 running back. But if I'm looking out on the landscape, the obvious number one team that jumps to mind is Chicago Bears. You say Fubisky, I say trolls, because that's all that you are. <laughs> trolling the Chicago Bears. Uh, no, we got to keep things rolling here with Bryant McFadden. BMAC, when you look at... Uh, the talent that remains. Uh, obviously, you talked about his time with the Pittsburgh Steelers when he was the all-pro running back uh, that we all fell in love with, the dual threat both on the ground and in the air. Is there a place that comes to mind or a situation that will set him up to be at least a percentage of that player? I mean, I want to say Pittsburgh. <laughs> I don't think Pittsburgh would go back down that road. Uh, James Conner, you got Samuel, mm -hmm. you got... Uh, 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 snail as well so uh, they're they're okay and also too they're undefeated so why make a change if the things that you're doing are currently working so I think a team that's trying to spark a change in the right direction especially on the offensive side that could use his services would be the Los Angeles Chargers mm. I mean Austin Eckler is going to be away from the game for another few weeks uh, Jackson, Kelly, you know, they're serviceable guys, but I think we all would say, even with the inconsistent production, Le'Veon Bell is better than both of those guys. And the last time I checked, they got a real nice up and coming young quarterback in Justin Herbert. And if you can give Herbert a do it all type of player like Le'Veon Bell to rely on, running the football and catching the football out of the backfield, I think that offense will improve dramatically. So that's a team I think we should monitor because I don't know exactly what Le'Veon Bell will be looking to receive, uh, but with him being released, teams would definitely jump at the chance of signing him because they're not you know, strapped to his most recent deal. So I think that's a plus as well. But a team like the Chargers might be a team you want to monitor because Austin Eckler uh, is gone. Kelly Jackson is there. If you can add him in that backfield, I think that instantly improves the entire offense and it also improves your new hot young quarterback. All right, let me ask you it this way then, BMAC, because it's tough to forecast where these guys are going to go, what situation is going to make the most sense. But let's look back on what made him great. What needs to be reignited? Uh, what was demanded of him as a Pittsburgh Steeler, a, a level that, you're known, that you've known very well, a standard that you've had to keep yourself? Uh, what is that standard, and do you think that Le'Veon Bell can once again hold himself to that standard? I mean, you know, Le Lev Bell, and he probably would tell you now, walked away from an ideal situation. Now, I understand the business was basically the reason why he walked away. But there in Pittsburgh, the structure, the entire organization, how it is put together, the standard, the structure, the process, and the consistency, if Lev Bell never left Pittsburgh, he, can, he would be in that conversation as one of the best running backs to ever do it in his generation, in his era and clearly for the organization. And the thing that helped him be able to reach his peak in Pittsburgh, you had a quarterback who was experienced and was a go-getter. You had offensive line group that had the continuity and the experience and the mindset to go out and do what they're supposed to do week in and week out. You got a coaching staff that's well put together, that understood what he does best and what positions he does the best in. And then defensively, you got a well-rounded group. And also, when you play with the Pittsburgh Steelers, everything you do will be seen. It's a five-star matchup because we're in it. That's what we live by in Pittsburgh. So when you went off and you left Pittsburgh, you went to no man's land. He chased the money. His pockets are extremely fat, but he wasn't happy because you weren't winning. And leaving that culture really, in my opinion, opened his eyes that sometimes the grass is not always greener on the other side. The money might be better, 
but the grass might not always be greener. And because of that, it didn't work out, didn't have any big time numbers, lost a lot of ball games, and now he's looking for another opportunity. But I still believe he can, he has a lot left in the tank. He just got to go into the ideal situation where they can use him at his best. And you better believe he will be able to help an organization out. You know, I just had to roll the ball out and let BMAC do his Pittsburgh thing. Right, it was, and he was incredible at it. It is fantastic, as always. We will see what the market is for one Le'Veon Bell as we move forward this week. BMAC, Jonathan Jones, thank you on short notice. All right, let's take a look here at General Manager Joe Douglas's statement just coming down moments ago. After having conversations with Le'Veon and his agent and exploring potential trade options over the past couple days, we've made the decision to release Le'Veon. The Jets organization appreciates Le'Veon's efforts during his time here, and we know he's worked hard to make significant contributions to this team. We believe this decision is in the best interest of both parties and wish him future success. Again, Le'Veon Bell released by the New York Jets. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.